welcome back to the Paramedic Project. Thanks for joining us once again today. Basics of sepsis. So three big points. Why is sepsis so important to us as paramedics? Second of all, indicators of sepsis. Thirdly, most common sources of infection that lead to sepsis. So why is it so important to us as paramedics? It is a big, big, big source of mortality and morbidity in our community. So we need to be able to treat it really well. Second of all, it's commonly missed by paramedics. And thirdly, when it's identified, it's actually very well treated. So it is extremely important to us to identify sepsis patients in the pre-hospital environment. Now let's move on to some of our indicators of sepsis. First of all, of course, we need a source of infection. Now we need two or more SERS criteria present. And those criteria are, of course, elevated heart rate, elevated respiratory rate, elevated blood glucose levels, and deranged temperature. And let's assign some numbers to those parameters for adult patients. So a heart rate greater than 90, a respiratory rate greater than 20, a blood glucose greater than 6.6, .6, and a temperature greater than 38 or less than 36 degrees Celsius. There are SERS criteria, two or more of them present. Then after that, we can look at evidence of distributive shock, so a systolic blood pressure of less than 90. And after that, we have identified our sepsis patient. Final point for today, the most common sources of infection in my experience that lead to sepsis, chest infections and urinary tract infections. That means that any patients we go to with those infections in particular, and of course all other sources of infection, we need to go hunting for sepsis and identify in the pre-hospital environment, treat it appropriately, and we'll really have a positive impact on the sepsis patient's clinical outcomes. It's been Paramedic Project. Thanks for joining us once again. Find us on social media. We'll see you next time.